Hi, I'm Andrew Watson from Creative Guitar Studio. It's November 3rd, 2009, and uh, we're just going to go through some questions that have come into the studio through my contact form off my website. And the first question comes to us from Arthur. He's writing in, he's saying, how do you do a chord melody arrangement? Thanks. Um, well, a couple things up front. When you're doing chord melody, uh, you, I always joke around with students and I say, to do it, you've got to know like a half ton truck full of chords. You need to know a lot of chords. Um, you really need to have a, a huge working knowledge of chord types. Uh, second thing is I would probably say it's a good idea to learn several uh, uh, chord melodies before you begin attempting your writing your own or composing your own. I mean, it's not... Now, it's not 100% necessary to do that, but it's really helpful because you start getting a bit of an idea about how some people have uh, arranged um, their versions and some of the chord voicings they've used for uh, different steps. I mean, some of it has to do with the steps of scale that you're on, but other times it's just basically matching the right kind of chord against the uppermost note. Now, that leads me over to what you do with the basic melody. So let's say you have your, uh, your principal melody, maybe it's the vocal line of the song, and what you want to do initially is trace it out fairly linear along first and second strings primarily, but once in a while you'll probably go over to third string and use F string a little bit. So uh, once you trace it out more or less, then you begin you know, building chords off of those steps and adding some bass lines if you want. So um, it's kind of a personal approach, but uh, like you can tell from my explanation here, there's a lot of background knowledge you're going to need to know, and it helps immensely to, uh, to have learned some other people's uh, chord melodies. So maybe check out some Joe Pass, some Pat Martino, do a little bit of research on it, but uh, in a nutshell, that's it. Uh, next question comes to us from Joe. Uh, he says here, hi Andrew, I'm making a song, but my recording sound like crap. <laughs> How can I help the quality of my recordings through a microphone? Um, well, uh, I would suggest just spend the money and buy a decent uh, pair of mics. So I go with a pair of condenser mics, uh, something like maybe between the 80 and $100 range. Uh, go with uh, mics that are powered. Get yourself a decent little preamp that has phantom power to it. And... Um, you know, get yourself also some decent recording software. I'm using Adobe Audition around the studio here. Uh, I've had a couple people mention an, a, a piece of, uh, I guess it's shareware on the net. It's called Reaper. Maybe you can uh, go and check that out. I'll put a link to that in the sidebar for you guys. Um, but, uh, yeah, get some decent software. Get a decent uh, uh, interface so you can convert your signal and digital to analog. I know PV is making some interesting uh, mixers that have USB out, and uh, I know I've recommended a Yamaha mixer. You can also use something like the Instant Music by ADS Tech, that's not too bad. Uh, but uh, for mics, um, I would go with condenser mics, you have a little bit more control over them. Um, but uh, it's all in, you know, it's exactly the, in the perspective of you get what you pay for. So if you bought a mic and you paid like 20 bucks for it, you can get the kind of recording out of that mic that's, you know, worth 20 bucks if you can follow me on that. So yeah, just, you know, get something decent. Uh, let's go to the next question here. It's from Mark. Uh, hi, I'm Mark. I'm from Canary Island, Spain. Um, I play piano. I uh, haven't uh, paid a lot of attention to music theory so far. I want to be a better musician, so my question is uh, scales and modes. Um, modes, major scales, minor scales, pentatonics, harmonic, minor, etc., etc. What, what I was wondering here is which order do you recommend to start learning all these things? Um, and so I guess, uh, I, I mean, you could start in some different orders. I would probably suggest so going after the basic major scales and the major pentatonics and the major seven arpeggios. That's how I started. I had a jazz guitar teacher when I was younger. He just basically gave me um, some of his uh, just handwritten worksheets on the major scale, and that's how I started. So uh, anyway, I mean, I would probably start with the majors and the major pentatonics, get those rolling along first. Pentatonics are really helpful. Uh, you can get a lot of melody out of those things. Um, and then, you know, get a little bit of work in there at the same time on arpeggios. Uh, I think it's really valuable to learn your scales and your arpeggios at the same time. And then you can go into minor and then, you know, minor pentatonic. Check out blue scale if you haven't checked that out so far. Uh, continue along with uh, arpeggios, you know, doing minor, minor seven. Um, and then I wouldn't worry too, too much about modes and uh, harmonic minor. That stuff can come a little bit later on. Uh, it's, it, modes can be kind of complicated, so um, I'd probably save that one. All right, let's go to the next question. Um, it's from Winston, and he's saying here, 
uh, oh, he wants to inter interview me. And, uh, okay, I'll get a hold of you then, and you can do an interview with me. Uh, next question is from Kent. Uh, I was wondering how much the tuition costs to go to a professional music school like GIT. Also, how much should I expect to practice while I'm there? And lastly, what kinds of jobs can someone get with a diploma from a music college? And that's from Kent in Colorado. So there's like three questions there. Let me just burn through these quickly. First of all, tuition costs for going to a place like GIT. It's astronomically expensive, man. It's, I, I, when I went, it was like 5,000 bucks. I sold a couple of beater cars I had, and I basically had my tuition, and then I saved money, you know, over the course of about a year and a half, and I had all the money I needed, you know, to go there. But it's way different now. I think the tuition per year now is about twenty-two thousand dollars at least. You're probably going to need about twenty thousand dollars or maybe more to live out there, you know, to pay for a, a apartment, you know, or and also food and everything. So. Um, yeah, I guess you probably need about forty-five, you know, maybe even fifty thousand dollars to do that kind of thing. Now, it's it's just it's sort of beyond you know what most people can afford, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, if that if I was trying to do this today, I wouldn't be able to afford it. I don't really know. Um, also, if you did borrow that money or something to go there, it's going to take you so long to pay it back. Uh, one of the questions here is. Uh, you know, what kind of jobs can someone get? You're guaranteed nothing. You go to these schools and it's just you leave there and everything is up to you. There's no real, you know, you, you can be a part of the musician's referral service through MI if you're an American citizen, I guess, or, you know, if you want to stay in California. But, I mean, really, uh, you know, the success stories that you hear, I, in my opinion, personally, it's sort of few and far between. It's very difficult to make a living as a musician, so just really keep that in mind. Uh, Lastly, um, also, uh, how much should I expect to practice while I'm there? Uh, you want to practice as much as possible. I mean, I was getting up at 4 o'clock in the morning, and I was practicing till uh, my first classes that were maybe around 9.30 or 10 in the morning, and I was getting home practicing again until my next class. And, <clears throat> and then I would practice sometimes till midnight. You know, I, I was practicing for sometimes 9, 10 hours a day. Uh, <clears throat> if you don't do that, I, I, I don't know, you know if you're going to really get your money's worth out of it. So anyway, uh, good luck with that. Uh, next person here, I mean, this is my last one I, uh, I'm going to read here. It's from Lisa. Uh, she's writing in from Wyoming. Uh, she says here, I sing and play guitar, but not for a living yet. I was wondering if you have noticed any changes in the music industry since there's been a downturn in the economy. Basically, is the music biz suffering at your level? Um, thank you very much. Uh, okay, that, yes, it's suffering. It, it certainly is. Um, my summer that I just went through was probably my worst I ever went through in terms of wedding bookings. And uh, um, it was also the first summer ever that I went through where I did every gig pretty much by myself. I, I usually do duets or I'll have uh, people come in with me like a piano player. Uh, this year, everybody's budget for their wedding was really tight, and um, I was going in there as just a soloist playing classical ja or jazz guitar, fingerstyle guitar, uh, and um, it was all from all the people that I dealt with. The main concern was, you know, they wanted live music, but they wanted to do it as cheap as they possibly could, uh, least amount of money spent, and, and so on. It's looking possibly a little better for this summer. I'm already getting uh, you know uh, information requests from people, but it's not great out there. Um, it's uh, it's very difficult, and you got to remember there's lots of competition for jobs. Um, it's going to be for the next few years anyway, in my personal opinion, kind of tough you know to make a, a good living. Um, I'm really turning more to the internet these days and pouring uh, loads of hours into trying to get uh, you know my internet side of things and the internet marketing side of things together. Uh, but um, you know it's tough enough to make a, a living in the music industry as it is uh, right now with the present economy. It's it's not uh, it's not helping any at all. So uh, anyway, that's all the time I have for today. Uh, looking forward to uh, hopefully doing this again next week, uh, it, um, and if I can, maybe shoot another one up later this week. It just depends. Sometimes during the, you know, by the end of the week, I get pretty busy with the classes and uh, with supervising stuff around the studio here. But uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for the subscription so far. Uh, I know there's quite a few people have subscribed, and I've only had this channel for about a week and a half or so. So thank you very much. Uh, until next time, take care, and uh, we'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.